Okay, here's a little bonus video for everybody. This question came up on the Q&A site and I want to answer it. It's asking how is this math expression able to actually work to find the modular inverse? So as a reminder, um, we looked at this code that I sent out that just adds a little extra seasoning, a little extra spice to the GCD algorithm, the normal Euclidean algorithm, in order to compute the modular inverse with this part. Um, and so why does that work? What's the math behind it? Thank you. I thought no one would ever ask, so let's delve into the math. Here we go. <laughs> I, I've been waiting for years to use this, this dumb terminal um, program that I downloaded that makes my screen look like the matrix, so thank you for giving me the excuse to do that and for doing an actual proof here. So this is what we're talking about. Here's the example that we saw of this Euclidean algorithm with this extra computation. So here's the formula over here. Um, this is what we're asking about. So let's remember what each of these things, uh, each of these numbers is. So we are trying to compute um, the inverse of A mod M. That's the goal, which means that a number that I can multiply by a so that when I, um, so if I call this x, this is the number that I'm after, then that means that x times a mod m should equal one. Now, if you remember, that's only gonna happen when the um, GCD of a and m is equal to one. So more generally, what we're gonna get is, uh, what, can, what we can always find is a number x such that x times a mod m is equal to g, where g is the GCD of m and a. Right, so if that GCD equals one, then we find the modular inverse. Otherwise, we find something that might not be as useful as the modular inverse, but we can always um, find this x. And so how does the Euclidean algorithm work here is we compute r, which is, uh, m mod a. So m mod a is the first thing that we compute. And then we recursively um, get g as the gcd of uh, a and r, which is the same as the gcd of m and a because um, of what we saw from the regular Euclidean algorithm. And then we also get y, this number y also comes out of this GCD call. So it's the number y, which is the inverse of r modulo a. So what does that mean? That means that y times r modulo a is equal to g. And remember, in the case of modular inverses, this g is just gonna be one. So that's what gets returned by the recursive calls, this y. And now the question is, so here's the magical formula over here, um, is g, the what we're gonna set is x equals g minus a minus y times m all divided by a. And the question is, why does this x work up here? Why, why does that actually line up? Um, and so there's, there's actually two things that we need to prove. The first thing is the hard thing is actually that this division makes sense. So something to emphasize, and this is like the double slash sign in Python, this is actually an exact division. So it's not like an integer division that's truncating. And so why does that work? Well, to say that something is divisible by a, that really means that mod a, it should equal zero. So let's think about the numerator mod a. g minus a minus y times m modulo a. What's going to happen? Well, we have to think about what these different pieces are modulo a. a mod a is like saying 5 modulo 5. Uh, it's 0. Right? Anything mod itself is 0. So that's just going to become 0. And m mod a, if you remember, we already computed m mod a is this first remainder r. So m mod a is equal to r. And so now what this becomes is just g minus y times r mod a. And what can I do with this? Well, remember, the what's guaranteed for my recursive call is that y is the inverse of r mod a. So that means that yr mod a, that 
is just G because of what we know from the fact that Y got returned from this recursive call. And so that means this whole thing just becomes G minus G mod A. So it's zero mod A. But what have we just proven is that the numerator here in this expression for X, the numerator is always divisible by A. So that's why we know that the division is an exact division. And the second thing that we need is uh, to say that it actually works. So let's look at this expression here and see what happens. We want to think about what happens with x times a modulo m. So we want to know about x times a modulo m. So let's substitute this expression for x. It's g minus a minus y times m over a times a mod m. So the a's obviously cancel out. Um, and we also know, because we're going to take things mod m, mod m, m is equal to zero, right? So just like over here, a mod a is equal to zero. Now m modulo m is also equal to zero. So that just kind of takes care of everything. This just becomes g minus a minus y times zero mod m. And anything multiplied by zero is zero. So this is just g modulo m. And remember, in the case of modular inverses, g will equal 1. The GCD will be 1. And so that's, that's why this works. So we had to say, like, why is it always going to be exactly divisible? And then um, once we multiply that x times a modulo m, why do we actually get back the GCD g? And so that's why everything works. I hope that this was a fun little excursion in math. I would not expect you to come up with anything like this on your own. I did not come up, well, I kind of reformulated the normal Euclidean algorithm like this, so I'll take a little bit of tiny credit for it, but um, uh, it took me five years of teaching this class before I thought of doing it this way either. So um, don't feel bad. It was a little bit of a fast proof here. The main thing is to know uh, that this works and that the number always exists and that this is the this is a procedure that you can use to find it. Um, so if you have any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Hope this was fun. Thanks.